Hello, and welcome to today's webinar in which we're going to show you how Mark Logic helps unlock value from your complex data and enable data agility. My name is Alicia Saya. I'm with the marketing team at Mark Logic, and I'll be moderating today's session. With me today, I have my colleague Drew from our solutions engineering team who's gonna show you how to use the MarkLogic data platform for regulatory compliance. Now, before we go any further, I wanna let you know that your lines are muted, but you can ask a question at any time in the Q&A section of the screen. And we do have time reserved at the end to answer those questions. After the webinar, you're gonna get a link to the recording, so don't worry if you missed anything. Now, I've got just one slide here to give you a little context about Mark Logic and our platform. Now, anywhere there's a desire to do more with information and do it faster, visionary organizations turn to Mark Logic to solve problems others can't. Mark Logic helps you get more value from your complex data and do it faster by delivering data agility. Now we define data agility as the ability to quickly and easily make changes to how any information is interpreted and acted on at any scale and for any purpose. Now our customers wanna work with information differently. They wanna connect information, create and interpret meaning, and consume data along with everything that's known about it for a variety of purposes across the enterprise. Now we provide a single unified multi-model data platform packed with capabilities like built-in search, semantic AI, mastering and security that lets them do just that. Now today's webinar is focused on how to use tools in the MarkLogic data platform to connect, create, and consume data to support a regulatory compliance use case. And I'll turn it over to Drew now to show you how it works. Hello, my name is Drew Winchowski, and I'm a principal solutions engineer here at MarkLogic. I'm gonna be walking you through a use case around regulatory compliance and how you can leverage the MarkLogic data platform to provide a data agility on top of your complex data needs. To set the context for this presentation today, I'm gonna to take you through a few key items. As an organization, we all strive to comply with changing laws and regulations, but that becomes difficult over time. Not all the information is located in a single place or readable uh, in a mechanism that is appropriate for the business. There is also potential for bad actors or just lapses lapses in judgment that expose an organization to risk. So how do we mitigate this risk? We need to understand the information, the metadata, and the context of this information to get a clearer picture. And as you may know, the data are in our enterprise are in varying shapes, sizes, and formats. And by its nature, they should not all be traded the same. Some additional context for today's demo. We have a fictional organization called Shields and Sun, and they do business with many entities. We want to ensure we're not interacting with individuals or organizations that appear on the U.S. Treasury's specially designated nationals list and blocked persons list. I'll be referencing this as the SDN list throughout this demo. So how are we going to get information that will help us identify if we're interacting with any of these folks? We'll bring in data from varying feeds and formats so we can start to build a bigger picture. We'll bring in people and organizational information from existing APIs that we have access to. Those will be in the JSON format. We'll bring in invoices to see how we're purchasing or taking advantages of services from other organizations. This data is going to come in from our relational databases. We have the SDN list that comes directly from the US Treasury and that's an XML feed. And to add some additional context and color, we're going to start to bring in news articles to understand why these folks are not people we want to deal with. 
We're going to be taking you through how MarkLogic delivers data agility on complex data. As I said earlier, not all data is the same. We have data that comes in various locations within the organization. It all started off with relational databases. These systems are highly contain highly structured data. They organize data in tables. They take advantage of ACID transactions, so things are consistent. But they implement a normalized, normalized view of the data, and this tends to get very complicated. Relational databases also tend to have difficulty with unstructured data or doing things like natural language searching. Next comes into the picture comes the document databases. These document databases you can store JSON, XML, and things like binaries, PDFs, Word docs, PowerPoints, etc. And these are very effective at modeling hierarchical data, repeating elements using JSON or XML. It's simpler since all data is stored in a single denormalized record. So that means all the data you need is within that record. It becomes intuitive for developers since this is typically how we interact with systems. And document databases do have a downside. It's difficult to express complex relationships amongst different entity types. The advent of the graph database try to solve that. They're very effective at expressing individual facts, discovering new facts through inferencing and interconnections of your data. They have great flexibility since every item is its own node within the graph. They can store rich relationships since everything is interconnected, and you can give these relationships semantic meaning by labeling them. However, it does tend to become difficult to recompose structures when everything is in the graph. But there's all other types of data around your organization that have tremendous value that you may want to use in a use case like this. Social media posts, blog posts, news articles, government reports, etc. And it'd be great if we can use this in conjunction with relevance-based search like you see in Google. Inherently, there are limitations with sing using a single data model. For example, if you're trying to put everything into tables, you're going to have a very complex schema. Not everything fits nicely into a row and column. Also, when you have lots of information, you try to normalize that information so your database runs efficiently. And that could cause a lot of bloat in your, in your schema design. Another approach is to use polygot pr data persistence. This inherently uses multiple systems, different databases, different file systems, and interconnects everything through service buses or service-based uh, service APIs. This becomes a bit of a headache because you have to manage all the different transactional requirements for each of these individual, individual systems, as well as their data, individual data domains. You focus a lot on the plumbing here and not so much on the, the problem at hand. What MarkLogic offers is the ability to use the appropriate data model for your information that you're trying to manage in its multi-model database. So we can store documents, graphs, as well as projecting table views out for things like business uh, intelligent applications. We also have the ability to create metadata on top of this information that's managed within the system using our semantic AI capabilities. We can analyze the text within these databases to tag and classify contents, as well as extract facts about the information. Some popular use cases are data hubs, for data integration, knowledge graphs, and metadata management systems. With all this being in a single unified platform, this allows you to focus on the business problem and not the plumbing, as well as managing the data in a model that is appropriate for that data type. This gives you, intrinsically gives you some advantages. You can contextualize your information, you can 
improve data quality, unity, and since it's all within MarkLogic's Mark multi-model database, we have world-class security and governance capabilities. You can apply various consumption patterns on top of this data, things like informed search, contextual applications, grounded analytics, and facts-based intelligence. And at the end of the day, what's that mean for the business? You get better customer experience, product innovation, trusted intelligence, and smarter decisions. The MarkLogic data platform provides multi-model capabilities. So what does that mean? We can store structured data. We can store document data, JSON or XML. We can store information in networks or graphs. We can store unstructured data, so things like free text. We can also store binaries along with their metadata, PDFs, office documents, etc. We also have the capabilities to geotag information within the system so you can understand where things are happening as well. And also, if you have information from legacy systems such as mainframes, we can bring that information into the system as well. MarkLogic provides enterprise capabilities and data management and discovery utilities as well. Under the enterprise features that we require as, as an organization, things like transactions, high availability, disaster recovery, data lineage and provenance, audit logging and robust security models. And in terms of data management and discovery, relevance-based search, semantic search for adding in context into your data discovery temporal queries, understanding where and where and when things happened. A learning and reverse queries, the ability to save a query and send out messages as content is flowing through the system. Data integration and smart mastering, since we need to clean data from when it comes from various systems. Classification and fact extraction, when we need to add information into the records for better discovery and BI tool integrations so you can build rich reports such as, such as Tableau and Power BI. I'm going to talk, take you into a brief demo now to show you the data platform and some, some of the things that you can do with the data once it has been all harmonized and enriched. I'm going to take you through Data Hub Central today. This is a tool that sits on top of the MarkLogic server. It gives you utilities to ingest, integrate, and harmonize your data from varying systems, no matter the structure or source. We're gonna log in right now using our demo user. And you can have rich and robust users and permissions in the system that will even integrate with your upstream security systems such as LDAP. Once you log into the system, you're greeted with the splash page that has the main functions of the, of the utility. We can load data as is, we can model our data for consumption, and we can curate our data to match the models. Once we go through these processes, we can explore the data using a rich and robust search. Taking a look at the load feature first, we can see we have some steps pre-configured for ingestion. This allows you to bring in data of different shapes and sizes. We can ingest things like XML, JSON, binaries, CSVs, and, a, and unstructured text. Everything you're gonna see here is also accessible via the APIs or through our command line utilities such as the MarkLogic content pump. I already preloaded some data into the system, and we're going to explore uh, the data as is. If I click this little explore icon here, we'll go into our rich and robust search. Looking at our staging environment, this is where all the data comes in in a pre-curated format. So we brought in data from various systems to integrate them, as we outlined in the presentation. We can search free text in here. 
to see what contents uh, are available. I'm just going to use the term granite and we see we have a few items here. We can even view the info and where the source came from. This was particular coming in from our invoicing system as part of our financial flow. We also see rich and robust facets on the left hand side that have aggregations. We can understand things like the sources, where they came from, the data types, document collections, those are the categories that we apply to records in the system, what steps touch them, and what flows they were associated with. Now that I have data loaded into the system, I can start to think about my consumption models. If I click in the model tab here, we can see a rich model that has interconnections between the entities. Data Hub uses a paradigm called entities to model business objects within the system. We're going to take a look at our person object here, and we can see we have identifiers, things like first name, last name, na names, dates of birth, and also flagged positions flagged relationships. We can also create rich semantic relationships between the entities. This is how we have our flagged as property within here. And we're linking over to our specially designated national list. So this model that you're looking at is for our consumption purposes. We want to see people, we want to see members of organizations, organizations, the information about the specially designated national list, as well as contextual information in the form of news articles. But how do we get the data into the shape that we want to use for consumption? That is where the curation aspect comes into play. If I look at the curation tab, we see all the, the models that we defined. I'm going to take a look at our person model, and we have a mapping step here. These mapping steps are a way to manipulate the data so it can fit the model that we want. I just click edit on this one. And we can see the raw source data that we ingested from our people system. On the right hand side we have the ability to map fields to our models as well as clean up data. In this case we're using a function from the out of the box functions list. These functions allow you to clean and harmonize your data without having to write any code. If you don't see a function here that you want to use, you can create your own using server-side JavaScript. Once we map over the fields that we want by selecting the field or calling a function, we can test it and we can see the data that maps over. Now that we have information modeled out and harmonization steps created, we'll create a flow. And these flows are part of our data workflow. Taking a look at this organizational flow, we have our loading steps and we have our mapping steps. We can run these flows to curate the data and interconnect the information that's in the system. I've already run these, these flows ahead of time. But we could also run these programmatically if we wanted to. Jumping back over to the Explore, we can go into our final database and see all the entities that have been created and mapped over. Or we can see all data here. We have a quick graph view to see all the interconnected items as well. So how do we how do we go about adding context to this information? We want to generate metadata off these records so we can better understand their interconnections as well as the aboutness of content. We're going to look at our semaphore tool to do that. We're taking a look at our semaphore tool now. This tool allows you to manage and maintain your knowledge models within your organization. These things can be simple controlled vocabularies or interconnected facts within a model. I'm thinking of taxonomies or ontologies. 
we're going to take a look at our studio to see how we can utilize the semaphore tool to add value to our structured text now that we have it all harmonized within the system. We're going to look at the modeling capabilities first. Taking a look at our SDN model here, this is where we're maintaining the list coming from the US Treasury about individuals and organizations that are, have been deemed specially designated nationals. We can search right off the bat and look at an individual that we're going to be using for our demo today. Abbott Belgian has a few relationships as well. He's related to a specific company, Sporto McDermott, and he's an individual within a particular um, category. We can also supply additional alternative labels for this individual and facts about them. Once we have our model created within the system, we can also use the semantic model to mine the, mine the text and classify the contents. I'm going to take a look at our capabilities there. Within our classific classification analysis tool, we're able to enter our text manually, upload a file, or call a URL. In this case, I have the text in my clipboard. I'm going to send this content over for classification. And once we classify the content, we can see that in the entities start to get pulled out from the system. And we have various levels of confidence within the matches. So we can see that we're matching Ab Belgian from our SDN model as well as the organization Sporer Dolan McDermott. With this data, we can also call this classification service via APIs to build these strong links between the content and the individual properties that are returned through the classification process. We're now gonna jump over to a brief demo application on what you can do with all this data now that it's harmonized and enriched within the MarkLogic system. Looking at this presentation UI, we can start to pull in information that we've in integrated within the system. We have rich graph capabilities, seeing the interconnected items within, within our system. We can pull tablature reports of the transactions that we've, we've brought into the system based off of the individual companies. We can use our geospatial capabilities by plotting geographic points for longitude and latitude on a map. We can contextualize information, bringing in those news articles as well. So at the end of the day, we're bringing in four major types of data, document data, tables, geospatial information, and graph information. So this, this little demo interface tells us the story about Shields and Sons. Our organization, Shields and Sons, have done business with another organization, Dibberts and Sons. And this organization is actually a subsidiary of Sporer Doyle McDermott, as we saw was on the SDN list. We're not directly doing business with an organization that's on the list. However, we are dealing with a subsidiary, and that's, that's an area that we may want to take a deeper look into to make sure that it's a valid business transaction. Just reviewing the context of the demo one more time, we can see that we successfully brought in data from various systems in different formats and added additional metadata to those records to contextualize the information. We've brought in JSON documents from existing APIs. We brought in st structured data from our invoices systems. We brought in XML feeds from the US Treasury for the SDN list and we brought in the news articles for the unstructured text for context. Additionally, we did a semantic analysis using our semantic AI platform, Semaphore, to add additional metadata to these records and link them up to the business objects within the system. Thanks, Drew. That was great.
And before we move to the q and A, I I wanted to sum up the reasons our customers choose MarkLogic to solve their complex data problems. Now, first, the MarkLogic platform is unique in that it treats data and metadata as a single data resource, regardless of format, type, location, or quantity. Data, including all its metadata, is connected or ingested as is ready for immediate consumption without the need for normalization, transformation, or simplification. Our semantic AI technology uses machine learning and knowledge models to synthesize, enrich, extract, and harmonize all types of metadata, which greatly simplifies creating and sharing what the data means. Now we store this meaning with the data to power informed search, contextual applications, grounded data for analytics, rigorous data governance, and transformational data security. The robust set of capabilities of our unified platform benefit our customers by enabling data agility, the ability to easily make powerful changes to how data is interpreted and acted on, ease of connection, allowing you to integrate existing data sources, repositories, applications, and workflows, delivery of information and context to its use case and its intended audience, data trust, which is earned via trans traceable, transparent, repeatable, and auditable results that are understandable by business users. Now, all facts and interpretations are part of the business record, which, as we know, is very important in a compliance environment, particularly. Um, so, in summary, with the MarkLogic data platform, you reduce the effect of data and knowledge silos in your organization with a single data source, along with everything that's known about what the data means. And it's all supported with enterprise-grade data management capabilities like security, scalability, availability, language support, temporality, interfaces, and a standards-based architecture. Now, if you think these are benefits your organization can take advantage of, we'd love to have a conversation. Now, MarkLogic is being used around the world to support a wide variety of use cases involving complex data. And we'd be very interested to hear about your use case and can have a technical meeting with your team to discuss. And also, if you're a developer and want to jump right in, we do have free training through MarkLogic University. Now with that, we've got a few minutes to answer some of your questions live. And if we don't get time to answer them live, we will follow up with you after using the email address that you use for your registration here. So let's take a look and see what's in the queue. All right. Um, let's see. Drew, first thing, and we've got some questions about the knowledge modeling capability. So, so first off, you know, um, where do the knowledge models come from? And, and kind of tied into that as you were talking about the entity model mm -hmm. in Data Hub Central, and then you were talking about knowledge models. How, how does that compare? Sure. So let's, um, let's start with the comparison of the model types. You can think of the, the different model types as la a layers. So in the knowledge model area, you start with a conceptual model. So you have a concept of a person, of an organization, et cetera, right? And then you go down to the next layer where you have a logical model where you would start to define those concepts. So Mark Logic is an organization. Drew is a person. Alicia is a person, right? So that's where we have those controlled information um, and managed for government governability within the system in that knowledge model. So everybody in the organization is speaking the same language about those concepts. Now, where that goes down to the next layer is where you, you can think of your physical layer where the data hub comes in and that's your actual instance records. So um, say you're, you have a vehicle 
and then you have a concept within your system about a vehicle. You have a um, make and model within your logical layer, but then you have your physical layer where you have that actual vehicle with the VIN number, for example. And that's where you would manage that at the um, data hub layer where you would have all that information flowing in where you would harmonize it and then link it up semantically back to those other, um, to the, no the knowledge model itself. So coming back to where do you get these no knowledge models? Well, some of the information is around your institution already. Um, it's institutional knowledge that can be encoded. Um, the semaphore utility has the user interface for, for um, defining those concepts and, and entering them in manually by a subject matter expert. You can also upload uh, content via APIs or spreadsheets um, if you manage data like that. Or if the information is not necessarily in your institution, or if you want to use information from a broader um, industry, so say you're in pharma, for example, um, pharma has very uh, strict models already that are in there for disease classifications and, and uh, medi medical uh, classifications. So things like RX norm and ICD-10. Uh, in, uh, in the financial space, there's things like FIBO. And in the news and entertainment, there's models out there from like the IPTC, for example. And you can bring in those knowledge models on, into the system that the industry is using already. And you can enrich your contents using those models as well. So is that kind of tied into some of those concepts like link data and reference exactly. data? Exactly. So you can use um, you can use those linked that linked data formats as well as that reference data that your particular vertical um, utilizes across the board. So from organization to organization, you're speaking the same language, right? And then you you would layer in your proprietary information on top of that uh, within the system. Okay. So it's a it could be a mix, basically. Yeah, very good. Okay. Um, I also had a question if you could explain further, kind of speaking of mixes, the mix of content that you used in the demo. Sure. So the the data came from various systems, right? So we had uh, systems that were internal to us, so like our financial financial system, and those were just data feeds from a, a relational data store, um, or like, for example, an ERP system. Uh, and then we had data feeds coming from external parties, right? So the US Treasury has their data feed in XML, and that's a very different format than what an RDBMS will be giving you. Um, that those are typically CSVs or, or flat files that come out of there. And we can maintain all the different data formats within MarkLogic because of the multi-model capability. And what's unique about MarkLogic is you don't have to select what model you want upfront for the database to manage. It can manage any of these different models at the same time in a single database. So you don't have to stitch together each of these components mm -hmm. to, to um, maintain a new data type or a new data model. Great. Um, another one here. So, okay, this was a regulatory compliance use case you were showing, and it was one particular one. Um, are there other regulatory compliance use cases that MarkLogic has been used for? Yeah, so we, we have um, customers that do things like GDPR and PII management. So they have information that they start to bring into the system and they want to share it securely with the rest of the organization, right? But if there's sensitive information in there, you want to be sure that is locked down and only the people that should have access to it have access to it, right? And it's not always um, structured in a way where you can do that. So that's where the semaphore capabilities come in as well where we can analyze the text within those records. So say it's a, a report or a email or a PDF that was sent over. We can analyze that unstructured text and determine um, to a certain um, probability if this data contains PII or GDPR using those knowledge models. So you may start to uh, model our, your organization's people um, information 
and concepts that are uh, sensitive. So maybe you're saying uh, health benefits are in there or uh, a rounding number for, for uh, a, a bank account. Mm -hmm. Like we can determine those types of information within the text uh, to a certain degree of probability. And then we can use those scores to determine if we should lock down that content or not. And then within MarkLogic in the database, we offer record level security where you can lock down a whole record or we can go down into the individual properties within those records. So you can, you can show some of the data securely, but you'll have to have like an elevated permission to see somebody's social security number or see somebody's home, home address, for example. Okay, cool. Um, let's see. So, you know, all right. Is Mark Logic used for other things besides regulatory compliance? Now we know the answer for that is yes, but you know, if you could sure. elaborate a little bit. <laughs> sure. So Mark Logic is a data platform, right? So you bring your information into uh, the system from all these disparate silos and it's really up to you on how you use the system and use the data. So if you start to bring in, uh, let's give another use case around knowledge research, right? So we have uh, organizations that do, you know, testing on, on um, new medicines and devices to make sure they're, they're safe to be used, uh, if there's any side effects, for example. Uh, and we bring information about like clinical trials in, we use the classification systems and the semantic relationships to analyze that content. And we can start to build things like R&D hubs and um, you know, knowledge hubs where you can reuse that content and air institutional knowledge to save time and money where you don't have to rerun expensive tests. Other areas too come into play with um, in the finance realm uh, where the content uh, for like trades is very complex where there's uh, specific interchange formats that are utilized by the, by the, the finance um, vertical. And they're, they're complex. They don't necessarily always fit into a, a table structure. And that's where our XML capabilities really come into play. And there is a new uh, ISO standard coming out for um, regulatory compliance around around trades that financial institutions need to need to um, adhere to. So that's where those capabilities uh, from MarkLogic, where we can maintain rich document structures and search things when you need to answer a regulatory question comes into play. Yeah, XML is everywhere, isn't it? You know, all those messages coming back and forth. <laughs> yeah. And what's interesting too on that aspect is that we can mix XML and JSON. So not all your content is XML, not all your content is JSON. So uh, the ability to support both of those document models within uh, within the multi-model system is key um, to, to maintain the data fidelity as well as um, the queryability and discoverability. Well, and that's important from a compliance perspective, isn't it? I mean, the, the whole notion that if you've got a uh, you know, a government entity coming in and auditors, regulators, whatever. Um, I mean, I, I remember hearing, I think Mark Logic keeps a, the record of the original data as is, right? So you can always go back to the original and then what was changed. And, and you know, again, seems pretty important from a compliance perspective. Yeah, exactly. To get a little a little nerdy here, it was that we follow a, a design pattern called enveloping, where mm -hmm. we take the original content and we wrap it. And what that envelope does is allows you to add additional context and and uh, metadata to that information. Mm -hmm. um, so think about you know to to go to a paradigm that everybody may understand is you're sending a box to to your you know, relative across the country, right? You have the contents in the box. You want them to get that, that, that gift or whatever you give, sending them intact as is, right? But there has to go through a whole process to ship from one side of the country to the next. So you envelope it, you put in information, tracking metadata, 
uh, information about where it's going. Uh, and we do something very similar to how we maintain the data in the system, right? We envelope the contents so we can track it along its journey through through its life cycle. Cool. All right. I think we've gotten to everything in the question queue. So, um, you know, wrap it up at this point. I want to thank everyone for who's joined us today. Um, thank you, Drew, for the great presentation. Okay. And visit our website if you want more information. Stay tuned to our Bright Talk channel. We do these demo webinars, different flavor of them every month. Um, so that's all for today. And thank you all for coming. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.